You have a purpose. Each one of us was created with a purpose. It's not decided on from our parents, teachers, friends, or our boss. We don't even decide. When we do whatever we want, we usually are not satisfied. It's God who created us with a purpose. The Word of God tells us in Jeremiah 29, 11, that God knows the plans He has for you. They're plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a hope and a future. His purpose for us is so much better and truly satisfying. We come to know what His purpose is for us. It doesn't leave us. We may even try doing different things in life, but we seem to come back to what God created us to do. It just doesn't leave. Through life experiences, we fine tune what we were created to do and we use it at different degrees all throughout life. Let me give you a personal example. I've had a desire ever since I was younger to get married and support my husband knowing that as I do that, my every personal desire would be fulfilled. Now, I'm not saying I'm his servant. I just knew that as I came alongside him, I would be satisfied. Even while I was in college, I had that desire within me. Well, you might ask, why even go to college if you're created to support your husband? because I had a lot to learn and I had to fine tune my purpose in life. Now, I tried doing other things. I tried being my own boss, but I was miserable every day and that lasted for a short six months. I tried continuing my education after I received my bachelor's degree to possibly be a Christian counselor and maybe one day have my own practice. Again, I kept getting pulled back to that desire of being a support to my husband. Even as I look back over my life, I've supported others, and it's something that I enjoy doing. I've never had a desire to own my own company, but I enjoyed supporting others. I've never had a desire to start my own practice, but I enjoyed supporting the physician I was working with. I never desired to be a professor, but I enjoyed tutoring while I was in college. I even never had a desire to be the boss, to hire and fire, but again, I enjoyed giving recommendation and helping others. Then in Bible college, I met Pastor Kenny. Now, I didn't tell him right away, but we started ministering together and I was so fulfilled. After we graduated, we got married, and shortly afterwards, we sold our business and went into full-time ministry. We traveled to the nations, and I loved supporting my husband. I thought I could do that the rest of my life. Then I got pregnant and knew I didn't want to travel anymore, so my supporting role shifted to our family. I still supported my husband, but by taking care of our family. I wanted to do that the rest of my life happily. But as our children have grown older, I can support my husband still by doing more in the ministry. I'm truly satisfied and happy. Now, obviously, not all women can say this. It's because I was created with the purpose of supporting my husband in ministry, and as I have, I'm doing what I love to do. When I had stepped out to do other things that God didn't create me to do, I simply wasn't satisfied. I knew on the inside that I was frustrated with what I was doing. And you're the same. If you look back over your life, you might see a pattern of what you are drawn to and how you enjoy doing that. Whatever God created you to do is good. That's what we read in Jeremiah. His plans are for good. Well, if they're good, then we will enjoy what we're doing. Now, when we do get discouraged with life, it's usually because of two reasons. We're either comparing ourselves to others or we're listening to the wrong voices. Wrong words and comparison can discourage you from what God has created you to do and who God created you to be. Psalms 139 verse 14 says, I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. 
The Word of God says He created you wonderfully. You are a wonderful person doing wonderful things that God created you to do. Again, you know what God created you to do because it's within you and you keep going back to doing what He created you to do and you enjoy it. Who you are and who I am must not be based on the opinions and words of others or even ourselves, but only by the Word of God. Also, we cannot compare how others are living their lives with how we live ours. We go to the Word of God to compare our life with how God says we are to live. Only see yourself as God created you to be and be you. I want you to forget about every idle word that has ever been spoken to you, whether by others or even yourself, and don't let the failures of life direct your future and define who you are. If God says you're wonderful, you're wonderful. He says you're loved, you're blessed, you're healed, you're protected, and you're taken care of, then you are. Anything contrary to God's word is a lie and does not define who you are. Now, we all have failed in life at every age. It's the failures that actually help us grow, mature, and fine tune our purpose in life. Moses, the man God called to be the deliverer, the one who would set the Israelites free from captivity in Egypt, he even thought he wasn't good enough for God to use. He thought he was clumsy with his words. So he asked God to use his brother Aaron instead. Let's read Exodus chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. God says to Moses, Look, the cry of the people of Israel has reached me, and I've seen how harshly the Egyptians abuse them. Now go, for I'm sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people Israel out of Egypt. And then in Exodus 4, verse 10, it says, Moses pleaded with the Lord. Oh, Lord, I'm not very good with words. I've never been and I'm not now, even though you have spoken to me. I get tongue-tied and my words get tangled. Then in Exodus 7, verses 1 and 2, the Lord said to Moses, Pay close attention to this. I will make you seem like God to Pharaoh and your brother Aaron will be your prophet. Tell Aaron everything I command you, and Aaron must command the Pharaoh to let the people of Israel leave his country. Now Moses didn't think he was qualified to do what God created him to do. We may feel the exact same way, whether we think that due to what others have said about us, from our failures in life, or maybe from comparing our life to others, we don't think we're good enough. Yet God created Moses with a purpose to be the deliverer, and that purpose was fulfilled. Moses did deliver the Israelites from Egypt. And whatever God has purpose for you to do, you can do it with God. Another example in the Word of God is Gideon. God saw him as he created him. But Gideon didn't see himself that way. Let's read in Judges chapter 6, verse 12. The angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and said, Mighty hero, the Lord is with you. Then in Judges chapter 6, verses 14 and 15, the Lord turned to him and said, Go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I'm sending you. Then Gideon says, but Lord, how can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I am the least in my entire family. There's too many of us who are like Moses and Gideon. We don't see ourselves the way God created us to be. So we're living out something other than who we are. When I say be you, it means be who God created you to be. Don't see yourself the way others do, and don't compare yourself to others either. Be you. Allow the purpose that God created for you to be lived out in your life. Listen to this. I think you might be encouraged. Are you familiar with Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida? Well, Walt 
had big dreams. He had a passion for the Disney theme parks and put it all down on paper, and he presented this to the banks to get a loan. Bank number one denied him. Bank number two denied him. Bank number three denied him. Listen, it wasn't until bank number 303 that he got approved for that loan. So 302 banks denied Walt Disney for a loan because they said he lacked originality. I'm sure he felt like a failure time and time again, yet I'm also sure that failure caused him to grow and perfect his purpose to build the best theme parks in the whole world. How about the number one movie director of all time, Steven Spielberg? He was denied by two of the best film schools, UCLA and USC. Talk about questioning your purpose in life. Then there's another person. There's Michael Jordan. He became the greatest player in the NBA to ever touch a basketball. Did you know that he was cut from his high school varsity basketball team? These are amazing examples of people who didn't let others define who they are. They were created with a purpose and they fulfilled that regardless of the failures, regardless of negative words, and even comparing their life with others. Finally, do you know who Dr. Seuss is? He's the author of 46 children's books that have entertained multiple generations. His first children's book was rejected by 27 different publishers. Again, these are great examples for us to learn from. Be you. Let the word of God define who you are and don't let others tell you who you are. Be you. Don't let other people's lives dictate how you should be living yours. I like how one Japanese monk put it. A flower does not think of competing to the flower next to it. It just blooms. I like to finish by encouraging with the scripture. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 says, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. This verse tells us that God is faithful. He will do what he says he will do. We need to believe him at his word. Just like Moses and Gideon didn't think they were qualified to live out what God created them to do, they decided to believe God and they did it. Walt Disney, Steven Spielberg, Michael Jordan, and Dr. Seuss did it. I know you can too. We don't have to be famous. If everybody were famous, so much would be left undone in the world. We just have to be who God created us to be. Verse 24 tells us to encourage one another and don't stop meeting together. Well, why? Because we need each other. We need one another to remind us of God's word when everybody else is telling us that we're failures. We need to meet together to be loved on, to be lifted up, to have others to believe in us and to cheer us on. Maybe you've come to a point in life that you're so discouraged you want to quit. You're fed up and you are ready to give up on everything. You want to stop school, you want to quit your job, end your relationships and stop trying. I want you to know that God thinks you're wonderful. I think you're wonderful, and God has good plans for you. If you don't know God as your Lord and Savior and this word is new to you, then I'd like to pray with you. Before I pray, let me tell you what Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 says. It tells us that if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. For it's by believing in your heart that you're made right with God, and it's by openly declaring your faith that you're saved. What do we believe? We believe that Jesus was sent by God, died on a cross, rose from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of God right now. 
All this was done for you and me. Why was this done? So we could be cleansed from sin and made right with God. We were born with sin, so we needed Jesus' blood to make us free from sin. When we confess Jesus as our Lord, we're saved from everything that the blood of Jesus purchased for us. It's a rewarding life. Would you repeat this prayer after me? Say, Lord, I heard you sent Jesus to die for me. His blood was shed on a cross so I could be cleansed and free from sin. I believe this. I say Jesus is my Lord and Savior. I thank you for sending Jesus so I could live a rewarding life filled with good things and be with you for all eternity. In Jesus' name, amen.